how to examine nervous system for cerebellar functions. We will divide them into examination of the head, examination of the upper limbs, examination of the trunk and examination of the lower limb. Looking at the head, some patients with cerebellar disease will have titubation as you can see in this person or sometimes the head will be tilted to one side. That can also be indirect evidence. Third thing, you are going to elicit nystagmus in this patient for which you hold the chin and fix it, ask him to look at an object one meter away from him and ask him to follow. And you can see nystagmus can be elicited in cerebellar disease. Horizontal nystagmus towards side of the lesion can be seen in cerebellar disease. Now we are going to test his speech. We will ask him to speak a couple of words which can bring out cerebellar signs. Say British constitution. British constitution. Tiruvananda Puram. Rajago Balajari. So it is very clear that his speech is clear and he does not have staccato speech or scanning speech. Now we are going to test his cerebellar signs of the upper limbs. To start with, we look at the tone distally, proximally and all other muscle groups symmetrically and see whether there is any difference. Number two, I will try to do what is called as head adiokinesis. Do like this very fast and you can see symmetry, asymmetry or the rapidity with which it is done. Then we are going to test is what is called rebound phenomenon. So he is going to flex the elbow. I am going to resist and suddenly leave it. If it is positive, it will come and hit his face. To avoid any injury, I am putting my hand here again so that no injury takes place. Alternatively, this can be tested this fashion also. You give resistance, suddenly give way and the limb goes up. This is safer in the sense it will not hit your face. Now comes what is called as finger nose test. So he will make a fist and point his index finger and he is asked to touch here, look here and touch. Look here and put your nose on your nose, again here. See the position of his uh, upper limb, his shoulder is abducted. This is the best position to elicit. In this position, even minimum amount of intentional tremor, past pointing can be recorded. So if the shoulder is abducted and maximally extended, you get the cerebellar tremor or intentional tremor. As you reach the target, you get maximum tremor and in between tremor is less. Now comes the examination of the trunk for cerebellar disease. So, sit without support and see what happens. A cerebellar patient will be having ataxia, he will tend to fall. When he sit like this, he will not be able to move. Then comes to the examination of the lower limbs, we have a couple of things. He is relaxed and sitting here. I am going to tap his uh, knee joint. You can see that his leg is going forward once and then stops. If it keeps on going for a couple of times, more than three of equal amplitude, you call it as pendular knee jerk. I am going to test the tone of his lower limbs as before. I can test tone of his lower limbs. And now I am going to ask him, just like the finger nose test, we are going to do test here, put your heel here. This is called heel knee test. He is putting his heel on the shin and dragging it downwards towards the foot and it goes other side. It goes very smoothly. Heel knee test. So this is also a sign of cerebellar disease. So there is a tone, there is a pedular knee jerk, heel knee test. Now we are going for cerebellar gait. Cerebellar patient cannot walk in a straight line, but for minimal cerebellar signs, you do the tandem gait. Ask, tell the patient to walk in a straight line with heel just in front of the toe, same time taking care, you protect the patient that he does not fall. This is how we look for tandem gait. So, summarizing the cerebellar signs, 
we look at the head we look at the upper limbs trunk and lower limb thank you